Well, welcome home, Sam Barber, after your highly successful fling on the stage of the Metropolitan. How does it seem to be back on home ground on the concert stage again? Very happy, of course, to be back with the Philharmonic. Sam, how many performances of Vanessa were there in all in the series? I think there were seven or eight at the Metropolitan. Did you attend all of them? Yes, I did. No trouble getting tickets for yourself. Well, not for me. I was able to sneak around, but an amusing thing did happen at the last performance. I wanted to hear an understudy, and I didn't want to sit down all evening. So I went around from the stage and uh, asked an usher if I could have a seat. He told me there were none, and I looked through the door of the, of the theater and saw one, which would be very good for me because I could run away when I didn't want to hear any more, and I asked him if I could have that vacant one. Yeah. And he said, uh, who are you? And I said, I am the composer. And uh, he said, oh, of course, I'll take you in. And he took me inside and said, we'd like you to have this seat. We want you to be very comfortable, Mr. Britton. <laughs> the Turn of Vanessa <laughs> by Benjamin Barber. <laughs> Sam, uh, let's get down to the matter of the day, Medea's meditation, Dance of Vengeance. The form in which we'll hear it uh, this afternoon is not the form in which you originally wrote the score, is it? Ah, no. It's had three transitions. You know, sometimes a composer cannot choose exactly, perhaps due to circumstances beyond his control, the exact form or the exact medium that he wants to write in at the beginning. Uh, in the first version of Medea, I was asked to write for 11 instruments. And as I was very uh, honored and happy to write for Martha Graham, who danced the part of Medea, I accepted this, and it was performed that way. But actually, a work which is sometimes as frenzied as this, in the first place, it needs percussion, which I didn't have, and so I rearranged it after a couple of years for ballet orchestra using the percussion I wanted. Was this for a particular performance, a new performance? No, it seemed to me at that time that would be the form. It was for normal ballet orchestra. And that is bigger than the, much bigger than the original version, but not as big as the one you will hear today. Was the second version for larger orchestra ever performed other than the Martha Graham performance? Yes, I saw that once danced in Germany with a very large ballet at the Opera House in Köln. And that has been used, it's rather amusing. A record was sent to me by a, a German deserts, Hilda Leonor, who recites this. This right with, here? Yes, with symphony orchestra in the German translation of the Greek. It would be amusing to hear a bit of the German translation. Where should we put it on? At this part? Yes, put it on there. <laughs> Aber du absurdus, Schmerzenssohn, mit dem Antlitz des beweinten Bruders mild und sanft wie er. Sie, deine Mutter, liegt hier kniend und steht zu dir. Lass sie nicht bitten und sonst. Somehow I think I would prefer to hear it as we'll hear it this afternoon. <laughs> Were you uh, influenced? It's a form that's not particularly popular today in America. But no. Apparently, that it was a form used very much in Germany. Recitation. The rec yes, the recitation with a background of music. Sam, uh, you were in Greece, weren't you, at the time or just before the time you uh, reorganized this work? Yes, I took a trip to Greece because I was marking time. Not only did I want to go to Greece, I'd always wished to, but I was marking time to get ahead with my opera Vanessa. I had written one scene of Vanessa, which is all the text that Menotti, who wrote the libretto, gave me. That was written in Maine. And just as I was ready to go full steam ahead with the rest of the opera, Menotti told me that he had to produce his own Saint Oblique Street, and there were no more words available for me to set to music. So I had to be very, very patient. This was at a moment in Vanessa where the tenor arrives, stands in a drafty doorway, very bad thing for a tenor mm -hmm. in a northern country, and Vanessa screams. And there that poor tenor had to stand for about a year <laughs> until I could find that Minotti was free and ready to go ahead. So at this time I chose to take a trip to Greece. 
I didn't want to start on any new work while I was so deep in Vanessa. And it seemed a wonderful time also because I was terribly influenced and, and uh, impressed with this wonderful country to do over the Medea in the form you're going to hear today. Now it's one movement and for larger orchestra. You found you had plenty of time between sightseeing really to work on this score. Well, I just took the ordinary tourist trip around Greece, and then later in the summer I took a boat and went to the islands. I was just like any tourist looking for the real Greece, which is not so easy to find. And perhaps in this work I was looking for my idea of Medea. You see, the Greece of the Greeks is rather elusive. We have the French idea of ancient Greece, you can see that in their reconstructions at Delphos and the sort of Beaux-Arts approach at Knossos in Crete. Then you have the German, somewhat 19th century romantic version of Greece at Olympia. And he, there's even an American sort of reconstruction of Greece in the Agora, the newly finished Agora in Athens. Now, where are you going to find the real Greece in all this? All I could do was put down in, on paper my idea of Medea, in which jazz elements are mixed with archaic suggestions, and perhaps this could only be called a contemporary Westchester County reconstruction of this powerful old legend. How did the jazz elements work themselves into this score? Well, this was a musical procedure. I simply wanted to use a boogie-woogie rhythm because originally Martha Graham and I had thought of, of writing this ballet on two levels. That is the archaic, uh, the legendary, and at the same time the contemporary, so that Medea would seem to be not only a figure of legend, but a contemporary woman and a very jealous one. What portion, Sam, of the Euripides drama inspired you originally? Actually, this version, which you will hear today, is based on the material of the central character of the ballet of Medea. You see, this piece traces her emotions from her tender feelings toward the children. It begins very quietly in a sort of an archaic style. And it becomes more and more intense through her mounting suspicion and her anguish at her discovery of her husband's betrayal. And then, at her decision to avenge herself, which you will hear on a big crescendo in the orchestra, the piece increases more and more in intensity and, until we have uh, Medea's dance of vengeance. After all, she was the sorceress descended from the sun god. Were there specific lines in the Euripides drama that you had in mind when you wrote the work? Yes. They are spoken by Medea. W will you read them? Yes. Look... My soft eyes have suddenly filled with tears. O oh, children, how ready to cry I am, how full of foreboding. Jason wrongs me, though I have never injured him. He has taken a wife to his house, supplanting me. Now I am in the full force of the storm of hate. I will make dead bodies of three of my enemies, father, the girl, and my husband. Come, Medea, whose father was noble, whose grandfather, God of the Sun, go forward to the dreadful act. It seems to me this work, Medea's Meditation and Dance of Vengeance, is vying with the adage of the strings in, in the number of performances all over the world it's receiving these days. Hasn't it been performed in Europe and in the Middle East? Yes, it has. It's much more difficult than the Adagio, so that limits it to uh, almost a virtuoso orchestra. But there have been performances in Ankara, Tehran, Athens, by the Minneapolis Symphony and Verati, yes. Mm -hmm. In Israel, Mr. Munch did it there. In London, Oslo, Lima, and then in the Near East. The timing has worked out very well, Samuel Barber, because Mr. Metropolis is just about ready to walk on the stage of Carnegie Hall to perform Medea's Meditation and Dance of Vengeance. And thank you for coming down and talking to us. Thank you, Jim. <laughs>